Um, today, uh, with uh, uh, the other uh, members of the membership committee that uh, <laughs> manage to be here, uh, we would like to also uh, give uh, an introduction uh, to uh, how the, the foundation is uh, structured and how we are working, because one of the feedback that uh, um, we, we got is that indeed it's uh, not always uh, easy to understand uh, which is the difference between uh, uh, LibreOffice as a project uh, and uh, TDF uh, as, a, as a foundation that is uh, uh, working uh, behind the scene. So the, the idea is to give you some uh, uh, details uh, on uh, how we are uh, working together, uh, making uh, uh, this great work uh, uh, that everyone is doing uh, possible. So, as uh, Thorsten mentioned, uh, we are close to celebrate uh, uh, another anniversary, and indeed, uh, that is the starting point, uh, September 28, uh, uh, 2010, uh, that is uh, the moment uh, when uh, uh, the Open Office community decided to create uh, an, uh, an independent foundation. And uh, apart from uh, the foundation itself, uh, that has been called uh, the Document Foundation, uh, there is also the, the project, the product uh, uh, LibreOffice, but there is also uh, the Document Liberation Project uh, that is uh, another project, uh, part uh, of the activities that the Foundation is covering uh, that should, uh, I mean, it deserves, really, deserves a, a lot of more uh, attention from, uh, from all of us and, and support from, uh, from all of us. Uh, the Foundation has been... Uh, um, created uh, for uh, um, promoting uh, uh, the free software, but also for taking care of the, the freedom of the users, because one of the goals was to uh, make possible um, for uh, uh, users to, to be free, to be not um, locked, blocked, uh, uh, by uh, closed source uh, software and uh, the limitations that are coming uh, when uh, uh, someone is uh, interacting uh, with uh, those kind of softwares. Um, the other immediate uh, connection is, of course, the, the promotion uh, of the uh, document freedom. And uh, with that, uh, it's clear that uh, uh, our focus uh, is uh, uh, open document format and uh, uh, the, the great opportunity that with uh, ODF uh, everyone uh, can have uh, because ODF, it's uh, the other point, an open standard, it's an open format, and uh, it's the way for users to make sure that uh, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, their documents will be still uh, available, still accessible, even with uh, um, coming uh, with, uh, with a document that is uh, initially uh, saved as uh, one of those weird uh, esoteric formats that no one is uh, using anymore. With the Document Liberation Project uh, and uh, the set of libraries and filters that are uh, uh, allowing uh, the import and the export of documents, with that uh, it's possible to, uh, to keep the, the freedom of the documents. Users can uh, save uh, their documents uh, uh, using uh, an open format, an, an open standard like ODF, uh, and their freedom uh, is uh, preserved. Uh, their documents are still available. And they can use the software that they prefer. The standard is, is there, and uh, everyone can, uh, in the future, decide to switch uh, even to another software. Uh, ODF is not uh, something uh, LibreOffice uh, specific, and this is uh, extremely important. And for sure, we can't forget uh, as a foundation that we also need to support uh, our, let's say, main uh, project uh, that is uh, uh, LibreOffice. And we need to continue to uh, invest also in the development of LibreOffice. Everything can work only if uh, all those pieces uh, are uh, kept together and everyone is uh, working together, cooperating together with uh, all the others. And, uh, Thorsten was also mentioning uh, uh, the manifesto. Indeed, we started from uh, uh, this kind of concept. Uh, we, we made a commitment uh, where uh, we defined uh, our values and uh, what we were going uh, to, to reject because it's not something that we feel uh, uh, that is uh, uh, part of, uh, of our project. And 
starting uh, with, uh, with those values, then uh, there was the definition of uh, uh, the way to work. And as you can see, the idea is that uh, everyone can bring uh, expertise, skills, uh, ideas, and everyone can contribute one way or the other. Some people can uh, uh, volunteer with uh, uh, time and contributions. Others can volunteer with, uh, um, uh, with investment. Also, that it's an important part. Uh, there are companies uh, working uh, in the ecosystem, and of course, uh, TDF uh, without companies doesn't exist, can't exist. But TDF uh, without uh, the remaining part, uh, the volunteers that are bridging together, it's also <laughs> that uh, a part that uh, can't be ignored. Everything can work only if uh, we have uh, this puzzle of different uh, uh, pieces that are put together for creating a TDF and for making TDF going forward. This is the point, and uh, while thinking uh, at the direction that we want to keep, uh, that we want to take for, the, for our future, we should keep in mind uh, from uh, where we started uh, and then think where we want to go together, and I'm really underlying together, because if we are not going together, there's no way to bring uh, TDF, uh, to, to steer TDF uh, in a direction that will bring us uh, in the right place uh, in the future. And uh, uh, TDF uh, as, a, um, as an entity is a legal entity uh, based uh, in, uh, in Germany. And from the web website, uh, you will find the references not only to the foundation itself, uh, but also uh, to other activities that uh, uh, the foundation is taking care of, like, uh, uh, for example, the certification project. The, the certification protocol is uh, a way to uh, build up and grow uh, even more uh, the people that initially maybe are just uh, contributors and then uh, or, or users at the beginning and then contributors and want to do uh, things uh, in in a better way in a professional way continuing uh, to to grow the the project itself uh, there is of course uh, um, the, the need to have uh, some, uh, some support, some uh, experienced uh, developers helping uh, or uh, experienced uh, trainers uh, or migrators uh, helping uh, uh, in uh, using LibreOffice uh, or migrating uh, from uh, something else uh, to um, ODF and LibreOffice itself. And this is all possible because uh, all those uh, expertise are connected uh, all together uh, inside uh, uh, the, the foundation that we all uh, built together several years ago and where we should really try to, to do our best uh, for uh, uh, steering the foundation in, uh, in uh, the right direction. And about the governance, um, we have uh, uh, several, uh, several bodies inside the foundation and we have uh, of course the, the board of directors uh, that uh, uh, is the, um, the body that uh, represents legally the foundation uh, that uh, uh, takes care of uh, handling the budget, uh, approving the budget that, that then uh, as, a, as a project uh, every one of us can, uh, can use, uh, can spend, uh, can uh, can use in the right uh, in the right way, and uh, uh, part of the budget uh, includes also tenders. And uh, with tenders, we can focus on uh, development uh, and support uh, of uh, uh, areas of our projects uh, that should uh, uh, get improved. Um, the other the other body is the membership committee part is here. And uh, uh, our focus is more uh, uh, on the uh, board of trustees, that is uh, the, the other body of the foundation. And uh, um, we are taking care of the membership. We are doing uh, the uh, reviews of uh, existing uh, membership. We are uh, evaluating uh, uh, new uh, requests to join the foundation. And uh, in general, uh, uh, we are also trying to uh, take care and address uh, uh, the needs, the feedback uh, that are coming uh, from uh, 
uh, all the contributors for making uh, uh, the, the foundation uh, a, a better place uh, uh, to, to contribute. Um, there are also some other formalities that both the, the bodies are taking care of. And uh, um, we, have, we have elections, of course. The, the next election that is uh, uh, upcoming is the election of the board. That will be uh, this um, October, November. We will start. Uh, uh, you will read more. You will get uh, information on, on the timeline and uh, all the um, details uh, that, uh, uh, the, in particular, the members of the Board of Trustees uh, need to know for uh, um, fulfilling uh, one of their uh, duties. And uh, uh, normally, this setup is done in a way that uh, uh, we have uh, uh, the membership committee that is handling uh, the elections uh, uh, for the board. And uh, when it's the turn of the uh, membership committee to be uh, re-elected, uh, is the board in charge for, uh, for the election. Uh, there is, uh, I was already mentioning it, and it's the Board of Trustees. Uh, commonly, we are uh, calling uh, also the trustees as uh, uh, members. And uh, sometimes uh, we are mixing up uh, between uh, contributors uh, and uh, um, members. But uh, from uh, uh, this uh, setup of the foundation, the idea is that uh, uh, the Board of Trustees is uh, the group of uh, members that are part of the foundation uh, that can uh, um, elect uh, the members of the membership committee, the members of the board uh, that can run for uh, one of those bodies. And uh, um, we are talking about uh, individuals that uh, are interested and committed uh, in everything that is uh, around the governance of the project. Um, I will uh, uh, come back later uh, on uh, the the role of the of the trustee, but uh, uh, yeah, the, there's much more uh, to to say on that. Uh, the last uh, uh, body that you can see here is the advisory board. Uh, the advisory board officially um, it's not a real uh, voting body, but in any case uh, uh, includes. Um, companies or other projects uh, that are interested uh, to uh, give uh, advice to, to the foundation and in such a way they can uh, uh, contribute and uh, steer a bit uh, the, the direction of the foundation itself. Um, now uh, back uh, um, to the details uh, of the governance. Do you want to... Okay. Yes. Um... The board of directors, uh, uh, Marina said, does you know the, 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 the they have to, to steer the foundation. They have decisions. They have legal staff and so far and so forth. And uh, when the membership committee, which are most of us, uh, as she she said, we uh, we have in charge to uh, uh, approve or reject uh, um, uh, applying applications for becoming a member or remaining a member. Uh, there is a technical detail from this year we have changed our tooling so to apply for the membership or renew for it you must be already registered in single single sign-on which is you know the platform uh, which uh, authenticates the, our users uh, all over the all our system infra, infra systems. Then yep uh, it's been to, yep. But uh, for that, uh, we will have a separate session with uh, uh, some uh, uh, extra details uh, on the improvement uh, made uh, for the handling of uh, the renewal. Uh, it's a follow-up from uh, uh, the discussions that uh, we had also uh, the previous year, uh, when uh, probably some of you, of you already heard uh, the, the name of uh, Proteus. And uh, yeah, with that, uh, we will uh, uh, focus uh, uh, more on uh, uh, how we are working uh, and uh, um, what we are doing uh, normally as a, as a membership committee. But back to you on the uh, activities of the foundation. Yeah, there is also another speech tomorrow about you know uh, those uh, topics. We will get probably uh, more in detail. Uh, to become a member, you have to somehow contribute, so be part of the community. 
and uh, the contributions, contributions can be in many areas, just like translation, documentation, blog contribution, wiki, and marketing, just like giving lectures or something like that, videos and so on and so forth, Telegram and Mastodon and every kind of uh, social media. Uh, then there is all the design area, templates, icons, user interface and user experience. Uh, then improvements, uh, um, sorry, uh, collaborating in the infrastructure because we have several servers with tons of software installed which need to be maintained up to date as well as the operating system and all the virtual machines and so on and so far. So then there is the bug reporting which is usually also a good starting point for newcomers, and the bug triage, much better. Then the testing, the use of support, also replying in the discourse or emails or whatever, or also group on Telegram or whatever. And then, um, yeah, try growing the community, so spreading the word and inviting other people becoming uh, part of the community first, and then members um, with word by mouth or telegram or by the way, by the way becoming an, ad an advocate. Then there are trainings and code development, which is fundamental, obviously, but it's not the only, as you can see here, uh, as well as the, ex the development of extensions, which is sometimes a starting point as well for becoming a developer. And then, uh, yes, develop, developing the ODF, the implementation of ODF file format within LibreOffice, which is something that attains also to the document liberation project, which is something that we sometimes forget to mention, or at least we don't, we don't do it enough. And then, um, you know, uh, import and export filters, which is exactly what document liberation is for and the promotion of open standards and open format. So, as I mentioned, it's not needed to be a member to contribute, because you can contribute freely, and you are invited and free to do it. But to be a member, you, have, you must have already contributed. And possibly you, have, you, you should have done it in a regular way. This means that uh, it is not about having a kind of a sprint and having, you know, for example, translating the whole software once and never, nothing more. We appreciate more, maybe less, but more constantly. And, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, the, the represent the needs of the local ERK, uh, the membership committee, and no, sorry, the members, the members represent the needs of the local communities, because when you become a member, usually you are already contributing, but possibly you know many other contributors which are not. So in that moment, until they come part of the foundation, so becoming members, you can anyway talk by means of them. And uh, yes, both the community and the board of trustees, so the members, are supported by the board, by the membership committee, and by the whole team you know that we have a team of employees and collabor collaborators. Um, yep, what can do the members? They can vote and thus steer the foundation because what they vote are the representant of the board of trustees, which are the board of directors and us, the membership committee. We are both voted by the members. But the members can also run, and please do it, <laughs> to become part of uh, uh, the membership committee or the board. So there are elections in, uh, um, coming now for the board, so please apply if you are willing to, to give more support and to help steering the, the foundation. And then, yep. Oh. Sorry, please.
Anyway, anyway. Um, so Hayel was uh, mentioning uh, that uh, uh, the board of trustees uh, doesn't have really the power to steer the, the project. Uh, let me tell you why this is wrong. Uh, on paper, you could say, OK, I can only vote uh, for uh, the board uh, or for the membership committee or run, uh, decide to run for one of those bodies. But when uh, we don't have elections uh, and we are normally doing uh, uh, our activities, you are a member and you have all the right uh, to uh, share your feedback, uh, communicate with the board, uh, communicate with the membership committee, be vocal when it's needed and tell us if we are going in the wrong direction. This is the point. You are not just uh, uh, the last uh, brick uh, that is uh, strolling around. You are part uh, of the foundation and what you think as a member of the board of trustee, it's important. As a, as a, as a, you have a voice, that is the point. And, uh, this is probably one of the things that we should communicate better to uh, the members of the Board of Trustees. You can uh, tell us if uh, we are not doing our job properly. You should tell us because you are a member of the Board of Trustees like uh, uh, the others that are uh, already here. And it's important for us to get uh, the feedback of our community, of our members. We, we can try to set some goals, as uh, Torsten was uh, sharing before. We can try to work on something, uh, but we also need to be connected uh, with uh, all the other people that are part of the foundation that are doing uh, their job, uh, uh, their contributions uh, every day. This is the point. So you can steer the project. Yes, as, as such as in any kind of democracy, you know, you, you vote for representatives, then, yeah, you should be able somehow to influence them and, and remember them that they are representing you. But I mean, this is so quite common in every democracy. By the way, there is a video, um, uh, tdf.io slash be a member, which explain those uh, things we are trying to explain and uh, give some motivation also to become a member as well. So if you're willing to contribute and uh, I hope there is some newcomers here today, especially locals. Uh, please do. Uh, you are really invited and welcome to, to apply, to first contribute, find an area where you have passionate and so where you can enjoy and have fun, both you and the project. Because something we remember yesterday during the, um, the community meeting is that the fundamental is that you have you need to have fun, because otherwise, as a volunteer, we, you will stop doing it. So the most important is to have fun. So find something that's funny for you, uh, funny for spending your time, and it will surely help somehow and anyway the project itself. And indeed, your contribution will be appreciated and credited, because we have the web page or the website where every contributor is listed, being a member or not. This is a page to apply for membership. Stop it, please. And uh, stop. Yeah. Okay. It's not my fault. And uh, yeah. So if we, if you have already contributed in the past, and uh, you have done it regularly, please don't hesitate to visit this page. It will require for the single sign-on authentication, and then you will find uh, the. Uh, the way to apply for membership, and we will review your contributions and possibly approve you. So, uh, I don't know if my colleagues want to say something. I would like to. Oops. Uh, hello. Okay. Um, let me say that uh, from Latin America, we have. A lot of people that probably uh, won't be here uh, with us um, at a conference in person. Uh, so uh, I understand the point of Eyal, I understand the point of Marina, Gabriele, and I have my own point of view as we all have 
inside the membership committee. Uh, I uh, would like to see more uh, uh, ways to um, hurt uh, the local communities. It's my point of view as a member of the Latin American community because we have talents there, uh, we have uh, uh, people contributing a lot and we are growing and we want to demonstrate uh, this to the global community. Um, we, we are in time? No? It's finished? Okay, okay. Well, uh, we'll probably we will have uh, more time to meet and share uh, during the conference. Thank you. Some words? Just thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much for everyone to contributing to the Libre Office. <laughs> okay, uh, nothing special, but I, uh, if you not do feel you don't have enough influence on uh, the decisions of the TDF, there is one simple remedy, run for the board. <laughs> but, be, but beware, uh, this could fire back. You will, you will invest a lot of time then for that. Uh, I'm stealing you just a, a few seconds more. Um, we touched a bit uh, uh, how we are working, uh, how the foundation is structured. We started to discuss uh, uh, where things uh, seem to be uh, understood in different ways. Please keep in mind that uh, we have uh, a session uh, on, uh, on Friday that will be exactly uh, with uh, the membership committee where we want to really hear you. So it's not a presentation with uh, slides and you are just listening, but will be uh, a, a moment where we want to get feedback, uh, also crazy ideas, complaints, whatever. Talk to us uh, and let us know where we can improve TDF. Thanks a lot.